with a new generation of consoles starting to look more and more like gaming PCs, I thought why not build a console killer PC that would not just outperform these new consoles, but would also look cool in the middle of the living room. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and welcome to my long overdue console killer build. We are doing a lot more PC and laptop content these days, so if you are into those kind of things, please hit that subscribe button and also turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's now get to this console killer build. Now when I started this build, I had two main objectives in mind. One, well, because it's a console killer build, it has to be small. And two, it's gotta be powerful. Now keeping point number one in mind, I decided to go with a mini ITX build. I have no other choice with that, right? Because it's gotta be small. And that's where the Inwin A1 Plus came in. It's one of the smallest cases that I've ever worked in. And man, it was tough to work in this one. Uh, ITX builds, when I was ordering them, when I was actually putting this together, I thought, hey, it's all gonna be very easy. But ITX builds are hard. Every single time you mess up somewhere, you're gonna have to take everything apart. It was a pain. That is one of the main reasons why you're not seeing a time lapse about this. I messed up so many times. And finally, I pawned off a big chunk of it, or rather a small chunk of it on Amartya. Thank you, Amartya. Any which ways, the end result, hey, it's beautiful, it's compact, it looks very elegant and white, it has RGB for days, and it even has a nice little Easter egg. It can charge a device wirelessly th thanks to the built-in 10 watt charger. It's got two USB 3 ports to the top, as well as a headphone jack. So it's a little light on the front IO, yes, but for an ITX case, for the use, use case scenarios that I have in mind for it, I think it's gonna work out very fine. Now for the motherboard, I went with a B550i RS Pro AX. It's a feature-rich mini ITX board from Gigabyte. It supports the latest Ryzen chip. It's got a 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. These are the blue ones you see here. The red USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports. These are the newest ones and they are marked in red. We also get dual NVMe slots and 2.5 gig ethernet. Basically, that's all I ever want from an ITX board and I have everything right here. I was extremely excited, especially for the last part, uh, since, hey, we've got 10 gig LAN here in the office and to get 2.5 gig LAN on this, I was super excited. But, and I kind of fell flat on my face because we didn't really get to 1.5 gig LAN on this. That's not a fault of the motherboard. Our switch basically has an option of switching between uh, 1 gig LAN and 10 gig LAN. It does not run 2.5 gig LAN. So we did not know that at the start. A lot of tinkering and an eternity later we figured that out. So it is 1 gig LAN for me. Hey. Anyway, I've been praising this motherboard a lot and that is not because Gigabyte is sponsoring this video. They are. There are some cons to this. And the cons are, well, they aren't actually the motherboard's cons. It's not Gigabyte omitting it. It's more of a trade-off for the form factor, a limitation, so to say. We get only two RAM slots, dual channel, of course, and there's only a single uh, full-length PCIe slot. Uh, I've, I've put two 8 gig RAM sticks already, DDR4 here. I might switch to 16 in the future because I do play a bit of City Skylines and that requires a little more than 16 gigs of RAM with all the mods that I use. Uh, but I do not have 16 gigs of RGB RAM right now. And for the build, for it to look nice and for it to be a very clickbaity thumbnail, I am gonna need RGB. So I'm leaving the eight gigs in. I mean, as in 16 gigs in, I'm not going 32. Anyway, uh, honesty apart, uh, I'm just, as of now, I'm just gonna justify it saying uh, more RGB equals more FPS. And that is fact and Amartya will factually prove it. Jokes apart, a little side note, if you guys are building a Ryzen desktop, go for the fastest RAM that you can possibly find. Ryzen just loves fast RAM, so having high-speed DDR4 can lead to a noticeable performance bump. As for the PCIe Express slots, well, I'm gonna be only using a single card, a gigabyte or uh, gaming NVIDIA 2060 Super and man that is a mouthful. It almost fe feels like uh, Asus has made a nomenclature for phones. I'm sorry, I went nowhere with that, but yeah. Anyway, coming back, uh, 
uh, it is powerful enough to handle most games and I wanted to not go overboard given the form factor. So the 2060 Super is what I decided to go with here. Since this is a console killer and all that, it is going to be hooked up to my living room TV. As for the interface, well, I've got some neat plans for it, but I'm actually going to give you guys a hint here. My plans involve Steam's big picture mode and controllers. Yeah. Think about it. Now coming back to the actual hardware, we've got the Ryzen 5, it gets 6 cores and 12 threads which is more than enough for gaming because modern games they are still limited mostly to using 8 threads and as far as clocks go we've got 3.8 GHz base, 4.4 GHz boost and that's pretty good right and it shouldn't end up bottlenecking the GPU. So overall the Ryzen chip it fits the build perfectly. Now when I've First made the build, I decided to go with the stock cooler. Bad idea, uh, but stock cooler did have RGB, so that kind of did make sense. But then we did run some tests and I found the CPU going up to a toasty 89 degrees Celsius at full load. Not to mention the fans had to ramp up quite a bit, making it a very noisy build. Now this is already a cramped case, not the best for airflow, but that said, see, here's, here was my logic. My logic was the PS4 Pro, all the consoles, they ramp up a lot. They're extremely noisy. And when you're playing a game in your living room, it's generally loud. So when it's loud, you're not hearing what's happening. It's not like when you're editing or you're rendering and you hear the fans a lot. But we're building a PC and it is still a PC, though we are calling it a console killer and we could go with liquid cooling. So I decided to chuck it, let's actually go with liquid cooling here. So I went on and put a Silverstone PF120 here. It's got a single 120 millimeter fan, but it should be enough to keep our Ryzen 5 nice and cool even under full load. And since we were swapping coolers anyway, we decided to scrape off the stock uh, thermal paste and replace it with some high quality uh, aftermarket thermal paste. So we decided to go with Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut, which happens to be one of the best thermal pastes available in the market right now. And this combination helped keep our CPU temps down by quite a bit. It made a noticeable difference. Now, the reason why we went with a 120mm radiator here, that is an industry secret. Uh, let me let me share it with you. And it is because we didn't have another choice. This is an ITX build, and in case you didn't notice, we can't really go with a larger radiator here. So yeah, stupid joke apart. That's my ITX belt. Oh yeah, I didn't leave one thing out. Something that a lot of people are gonna crib about. We use the same PSU that Nwin did provide. And for everybody who's gonna have a problem with it, guys, this is an 80 plus gold certified 650 watt PSU, which is why we went with the same PSU that the case manufacturer provided. And there is an added benefit to using this. The shroud that you see here, the only with the included PSU can you actually get proper concealment of all the cables and everything, which is why we actually decided to go with it. And the 80 plus gold certification also helped. So any which ways, we felt this was good enough and this happens to be my console killer mini PC. It can run all the games that I want, look sleek at the same time and stay quiet while doing it all. Heck, it can even charge my phone while it's at it. And the best part about it, I still get a ton of upgrade options. So I can slot in a bigger, better GPU down the line because uh, this does support GPUs uh, up to 320 millimeters. So almost all dual fan GPUs will have no problem slotting right in. And then at the back, we still have two empty bays for further SSD expansion if so desired. And did I show you guys the RGB? Because this one has full addressable RGB. And that's basically what delayed the entire build. I'm pretty sure some other people have done uh, mini ITX builds recently and I'm, I mean, there are gonna be at least a few comments going, hey, you copy that person or this person or whoever. And we actually started this build way, 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 way before the lockdown. And Inwin messed up the addressable RGB uh, accessories pack for this. So we could not, in, we could not complete the RGB part of the build and then we had to wait for the lockdown to end and them to ship us everything. That took a while and when they shipped it, they, they missed the three pin and then we had to wait for the three pin to come in. It was a long, 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 
Long, long, long, long, long wait, and finally the build is done. So any which way, long story short, this is the build and it's done and everything syncs up. We've got a hell of a lot of RGB on everything, right from the RAM to the pump to the uh, fans, everything syncs up. Speaking about the fans, I also added a couple of knock to a 120mm fans at the bottom. They're really silent fans and I wanted the silent fans because I might might have to run them at a higher RPM if needed because I want to go for a, a positive pressure in every uh, case that I build because with positive pressure there's more air coming in than going out which means the dust buildup is lesser and it's only through the bottom that we have air filters uh, so that is what I'm going to try to maintain in this build uh, hence the Noctua fans here uh, so what else, what else, what else? You guys tell me, what else do you, okay, you know what, before all that, I've been talking a lot, let's now, you know, be done with the talking and just take a look at some of the gameplay footage. That about wraps it up for this video. Do tell me if you'd want me to make a follow-up video to this console killer PC. I feel it would be plus for me if we actually built this and did not do a follow-up video. So let me put it this way. What would you want to see in the follow-up video? Gaming benchmarks, whatever it is, leave a comment down below. Let me know. And whatever it is that you guys want to see, I'll go ahead and make it happen. And as always, like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. And if you'll excuse me, I'm off to play some Flight Simulator on my new PC. Bye-bye now.